There we go. Happy New Year, everybody. It's Suki Jeffries. Welcome back to Defying Expectations Over 60. I'm a life coach, an author, a courage expert, and um, I talk to people on Tuesday mornings about defying expectations over 60. And that is people who are over the age of 60 who aren't slowing down. They are doing really exciting and fun things in their lives. Um, what I like to call retire and rewire. Um, and today my guest is Joyce Petrowski from Phoenix and um, she is actually not over 60. She's a special guest this week uh, because she has a really great nonprofit. It's a newer nonprofit. They um, had their first full year last year. It's called Resources Outreach to Safeguard the Elderly. And it's about scams. It's about protecting seniors from scams. So Joyce, why don't you introduce yourself briefly, and then we'll talk a little bit about ROSE, which is Resources Outreach to Safeguard the Elderly. Hi. Uh, thank you, Suki, for having me. Um, so I... Um, I'm an accountant by trade. I, that's where I spent uh, the majority of my life. And uh, when I had my kids, I stayed home with them. I have two kids and they're grown and I just graduated college. And um, I decided to get into the nonprofit world. And um, eight years ago, I had started, I co-founded a nonprofit with a few other people and, and left there in April of 21 and then uh, took a few months off and just uh, have been hearing a lot about these frauds and scams and seniors that are getting affected and um, had a had an incident with a loved one. And so I thought, you know, what what can be done? And so yeah. I started Rose. Fantastic. So it, can you share your incident that you had with loved one? I have one, too. So I'll share mine as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I had a loved one that was involved in a romance scam and um, and um you know, didn't lose their life savings, but did lose some money. And I just saw how difficult it was um, going through the process of bringing them out of, of that romance scam. Um, and then started doing a lot of research and talking to a lot of different people and just saw exactly how prevalent this was and yeah. still is. Yes, it's crazy. And um, I find so my the incident that I have to relate um, has to do with a, a loved one of mine as well, really close um, family member who was um, not involved in a romance scam, but was contacted um, to say, oh, there's um, such and such going on. Um, are, are you interested in helping us out? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it, it was um, the, you know, like the first red flag was, well, you know, the best way that you can help us instead of sending us money directly is to go get a bunch of gift cards to wow. these various, um, to these various stores mm -hmm. and send them and mail them to us. And, um, and my loved one was out sort of, you know, going and getting the gift cards until, um, uh, my sister and I sort of got wind of it and said, um, you know, this, this doesn't sound legit. Let's mm -hmm. put a halt to it right now. And, um, I, I find, and, and I, I guess I should ask you because you've done the research. I, um, my experience, ex at least with my loved one was that they're very trusting mm -hmm. of people who write to them and call them on the phone a whole lot more so than we are. Yes. And, and that, that is one of the bigger factors is, you know, um, like you said earlier in the show, I'm not over 60, but I am close to 60. And, you know, even in my generation and then all the generations before me, we grew up without this technology. You know, our phones sat on a table or were connected to the wall and you could only go so far as the cord would allow you. We had no cell phones. Yep. You know, we didn't have the computers. And, and so with all this technology, it's made it much, much easier um, for scammers to um, get in touch with people. But yeah, I mean, you know, the whole trusting factor is I always say when I grew up, you know, we didn't lock our house. We didn't lock our car doors. We played mm -hmm. outside till 10 o'clock at night, you know, just our parents never knew where we were. <laughs> 
right, you know, and unfortunately the world's changed. Yes, definitely. And I, I agree with you. I think the technology makes it a whole lot easier for these scammers to target people either by phone or by internet. And um, yeah, it's, it, it is a problem. So what are the, some of the most prevalent scams? I, I know the um, romance scams must be just devastating because uh, you know, a lot of uh, seniors older than us, you know, really lonely, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they just absolutely. want some company. Right, right. Um, well, the romance scam is a big one for seniors. Um, a lot of the scammers will watch obituaries okay. and um, they also will troll dating sites and social media because, you know, you might update your status to widow or widower mm -hmm. or something like that. And so that's what then they prey on. And because they realize that you're lonely and you still might be going through the grieving process. Mm. And so that's where they build the absolute trust and don't want you talking to anybody else. And really the reality is, is they're going to continue to talk to you daily, if not multiple times a day, but when the money runs out, you're never going to hear from them again. And it's really, it, it doesn't just affect you financially. It affects you emotionally. Oh and yeah. All of that. And it can yeah. be very devastating, but you know, there's also tech support scams, you know, you get the pop-ups or you mm -hmm. get, the email. they pretend to be from, you know, Microsoft or a big company like that. And you've got a virus on your computer and, you know, we can take care of that, which what you don't realize is they're actually inputting code on your, com having you input the code on your computer. Or you gave them access to your computer and they're putting this code in there, which allows them to see everything that you're doing. Yes. You know, including your, your financial information. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. And, um, you know, the grandparent scam is, is another one. It's, um, they they now have the names of your grandchildren yeah. and they call and pretend to be one of your grandchildren and um, that they're in trouble. And, you know, I, I tell people, you know, most grandparents will do whatever they need to do to help their grandchild out of trouble. And you're in that emotional state, you know, that you're scared for your grandchild. And so you're not thinking rationally. Yes. You know? And that's really the key with any scam is they get you into an emotional state and they want you to act out of that emotional state because when you talk to somebody that's in a rational state, then they would help you realize that this is just a scam. And so that's why a lot of times they don't want you talking to anybody else. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, my mother-in-law has been called with that um, grandchild scam mm -hmm. and, um, and my dad has been called with, uh, uh, for the, or actually was contacted with that pop-up scam. Oh, okay. And so, I mean, they're super prevalent They're They don't discriminate, you know, by any means. And yeah, I, I just think it's a really fantastic, um, nonprofit that you've started. So tell us about mm -hmm. what Rose does. So what Rose does is we go out to wherever we can have an audience of seniors and, you know, I say seniors, um, it's really older adults. And we use the 60 plus population because right. that's just the way in all of the data that the government collects on the scams and frauds. That's how they've broken it down. So sure. that's what we use. Um, so really older adults and anywhere we can have an audience. So senior centers, assisted livings, independent livings, churches, and we go out and do educational presentations, we talk about these scams that have a tendency to affect them and explain how these work. And then we give them tips and tools because it's okay. not a matter of if they're going to get contacted. It's a matter of when and how often. And so these resources and tips and tools that we give them, they're printed out so they can take them with them and they can continue to look at them, you know, as much as they want. And the resources that we give them are like, you know, how do you freeze your credit? How do you put a credit alert on your credit cards? So then you get yes. notified of the transactions. Yes. Um, you know, if you're looking for antivirus software, you know, we usually will have a source to an article that's compared 10 or 12 of them and gives you the pros and cons so you can make your own decision. And there's also silence unknown callers, which is something uh, just it's a uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, but no. it's on Android phones and Apple phones and you go into your phone settings 
and there's a, you just need to turn it on. And what it does is any phone call that you get that's from a number that is not in your contacts will not even ring to your phone. Oh my gosh. My dad, my dad needs that. His automatically phone goes to long. voicemail. Yeah. yeah. Now, Fantastic. whoever it is on the other end, they have the option of leaving a voicemail. But the thing is, is that it doesn't ring into your phone and it doesn't entice you to want to answer it. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Boy, I mean, these are all really great things. So um, how do people get in touch with you if they want to engage Rose mm -hmm. to come and do one of these educational presentations at wherever? I mean, networking groups, churches, right. senior centers. Um, uh, yeah. How do they engage you? So um, on our website, which is roseadvocacy.org, that's O-R-G. Okay. O -R -G. Um, they can, there's a contact us button on there or the phone numbers on there. And you can just give us a call. Um, the phone number is 602-445-7673. And then the email is the info at roseadvocacy.org. Uh, send us an email, give us a call. We're on Facebook and LinkedIn. You, you can look it up and, um, you know, you can connect with on you know, um, message us through one of the posts on there. Um, there's a variety of ways, you know, we can talk about where we can go do these presentations. And I can tell you with the presentations, we like to do a minimum of two per year to the same at the same place, because if we do it just one and done, um, it's great information, but you know, with anybody, you get busy, you get onto other things, you forget about it, yes. you lose the papers, all of that. But if we can do a continual twice a year, it also allows us to bring in new things that are going on oh, and keep, yeah. keep people updated. And just if we, the more we can keep it in the forefront of everybody's mind, the better apt they're going to be to be able to protect themselves when they're contacted. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that's a great idea because these things change all the time. I know you're going to get wind of new scams and yeah, new things that people need to look out for. That's fantastic. So um, can you repeat? So I've got on the screen, sure. uh, roseadvocacy.org. Can you repeat the phone number? Because I'm going to put that up as well. Oh, okay. 602. Yes. 445-7673. Six seven three. Okay, I'm gonna do that, and I'll show that on the screen. There you go. So anybody who wants to have an educational program about scams that are hitting older uh, Americans, um, contact Rose Advocacy. Um, right now, you're in Phoenix, right, Joyce? Correct. So um, I think when you and I talked, you talked about perhaps offering these via a webinar or Zoom session. I, right. I, I've done a few uh, Zoom sessions. I did it for an organization in Tucson. Mm -hmm. Really right now, since we are newer, that's really how we can go outside of Maricopa County, which is, mm -hmm. which is Phoenix and the surrounding area, is to do it over Zoom. But we're working this year on some different options to be able to have it more readily available to different okay. areas outside of Phoenix. Super. So, I, I know my dad, my dad is a, a retired minister and he teaches a class to, um, you know, most of the people are over 70 in that class and um, they are computer savvy. They use Zoom. So I'm going to recommend that they put together oh, cool. a class with you. Um, and folks, um, I, I am so, um, I'm so glad to hear about this kind of a service for seniors. I, I, I have a soft spot in my heart. Uh, my dad's 89 and he's, he's a really sharp guy, but he does trust people and he does right. tend to get, um, uh, confused, uh, bamboozled, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he gets scammed. Um, he has been on the verge of being scammed a couple of times. And so, you know, I, I think this is a really great service. I think you should get in touch with Joyce and Rose resources outreach to safeguard the elderly. Elderly may not be your favorite word, but it fits the acronym Rose, yeah. which is easy right. to remember. So Rose advocacy, um, Joyce, anything else you want to add before we uh, bring this to a close today? 
Um, you know, we're going to be launching this week. We're going to be doing a fundraiser at the end of April, a golf tournament. So any, oh. in, in Phoenix at the Biltmore, it's April 28th, 730 in the morning shotgun. It'll be on the website this week. If anybody's interested, we'd love to have you play golf. We are looking for volunteers and also looking for sponsors. Very good. Okay. So will your sponsorship information be on your website, roseadvocacy.org? It'll, yeah. It'll be up there this week. Okay, super. Yeah, glad to hear about it. And um, I'm happy to cross post that on my social media oh, okay. too. So, and and folks, I did. I was gonna say I lost my train of thought before, but I I um, I am so um, I am so pleased about this organization that I have actually talked to Joyce about volunteering my time for it. Uh, so. Um, if you want to volunteer or you want to support or you want them to um, present to your group, please get in touch all the ways that we've mentioned here. Um, Joyce, I'm so glad to have had you on the program today. And um, everybody, I'll put as much information as I can into the comments on Facebook and uh, YouTube and uh, LinkedIn so that you can uh, get in touch with Joyce. Uh, Joyce, Happy New Year again. And thank you so much for being with us today. On Thank you for having me on defying expectations over 60. So if you are over 60 and you're doing really fun and great and energetic things in the community, um, I would love to talk to you. I'd love to highlight you on defying expectations over 60. We, um, we broadcast at noon, uh, Arizona time. Actually it's 11 Pacific time, which Arizona eventually will be on Pacific time again next year in the summer, but it's new, uh, 11 AM Pacific time every Tuesday. So if you're interested, please get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, Joyce. Happy new year, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Right. Bye. Thank you.